So I went ahead and painted this the other night when I was uh, not feeling too great. So I just kind of sort of lazed around one day and decided to brush in two chameleon colors into the dragon on the wings, the spikes, the tail, and I also put some Hopefully they'll look like craters. That's what the little round circles are to the moon. So hopefully they'll look like craters that this is a dragon sleeping on the moon. The tail's wrapped around the top. I'm going to not do black, but I'm going to be mixing in a good bit of the glow in the dark. Um, Cause I want the moon to glow and I know it'll make the dragon more pastel-y color. And that's quite all right with me. Turn that fan off for a moment. because I don't want to open the package and have this blow everywhere. And I'll probably have to mix up some more resin, but we'll see. I can get the package open. And the glow that I'm using is Techno Glow. It is pineapple yellow, so it actually glows uh, yellow it looks yellow in the day and it glows a kind of sort of a yellowy orange at night. It's a really, it's one of the best glow powders out there, Techno Glow. It lasts hours upon hours upon hours. Not, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes to maybe an hour or two. This literally lasts several hours. Get me a little extra out. All right, let's move you out of the way. And yes, there is some gold flakes in there because that was from a previous uh, mix as well as some silver holographic. Now I'm going to be mixing the um, yellow glow powder into here. I may have to add some more. We'll see how it goes. Yep, I definitely want a little bit more glow. Here, let's add a few bits of this glitter. This is a glow in the dark and it gives more of a green, so it'll give a different color in there. And I'm going to put some of Let's Resins. Um, this one is just Sulin glitter extra fine glow in the dark and this one is let's resin glow in the dark green and they're the big chunky pieces so I'm going to use a bit of each because I want a lot of glow and that'll give it some other texture and effects to the moon area It's a little warm in this here house. 76 inside and 48% humidity and it's like 100 degrees outside. I don't even know what the humidity is, but it is high here because I'm in South Georgia. So we have a lot of heat and a lot of humidity.
and this will most definitely not fill up the mold so I will have to let it cure for a couple of hours before I pour in some more and I'll do the same mixture a little I won't add any more of the the regular the holographic or the the gold flakes but I will be adding the glow in the dark stuff to it so let's get this spill. I get my hand turned around so I can get a better grip. Yep, I'm dripping just outside the mold, but it's on my mat. I'll get that cleaned up shortly. Sorry if my hand's in the way here. I'm trying to get as much of the resin out as I can. We are back to finish mixing and pouring some resin to put into my little dragon moon. I have enough glow in there. I'm just going to add do a little bit of regular yellow mica so I'm not using up my glow because I got more than enough spots for glow. I might add some of the well I might add a little bit because I do need some for that one little corner but the rest is going to be just the Let's Resin Yellow Mica Powder. And like I said earlier, I started off with the Techno Glow Pineapple Yellow. And it is a really awesome glow in the dark. It charges best under UV lights. So I'm going to pause, mix up my resin. I'm going to mix up about 10 ounces. Because after I do this, I have another project uh, cauldron jar I had started and I need to finish. So I'm going to uh, do it next. And I can just add black um, aluminite dye. So I've got black aluminite dye to add to the little cauldron to finish it off. That's why I'm doing extra. So we'll be back shortly. Pause. Okay, I've got uh, some resin mixed up. Gonna finish pouring this here pretty dragon and moon. Get the rest of your spots done. Easy, don't bump. You're gonna drip, drip over there. Here, wipe off so hopefully I'm not dripping. All right, finish off into the head.
Would you quit dripping in multiple places so I can see if you're going into the head? Up to the nose and to the tip without going over anywhere else, please. I want you level without going over. Okay, so let's see if I can gently, carefully maneuver some stuff around so I can get to the cauldron I need to do next. You're out of the way. Yep, I'll need the spray. You're done over there. I will need that in a minute for the cauldron. I'll set on this side. Let's see, slow. in there. Okay. Got that moved. So, finish off this cauldron I started the other day and pour the lid. Get the black dye. This will be interesting to see the black and the yellow, how it mixes. Hopefully the black will do it pretty well. I may have to Send it back through the vacuum chamber again. We shall see. Now I notice this lid on the aluminite die does not stay closed very well, so I had to keep it in a Ziploc baggie because there it kept still coming out of the nozzle some. So have to be careful on that. Let's get these guys into view. Let's move you on that side. Okay, you're good into view. So I've already got it, you know, cured, black. Let's see how we can get. Hopefully that's enough. Baby. See how it mixes with the yellow. <laughs> May have to add some more, we shall see. Gives it kind of sort of a yellow tinge. And there is some glow in the dark and yellow mica in this already, but I doubt it will glow through the black because the black is pretty opaque. I mean, it is pretty opaque. It is giving a kind of sort of a yellow tinge, so the cauldron will probably bottom half will come out looking a little different than the other half. But this is going to be for my granddaughter. She likes, I have a ceramic cauldron that I have a, um, a fogger in, in um, my bathroom, and she loves seeing that. So I figured I'd make her a cute little coffin, I mean, cauldron of her own. She's three. She likes to take all my pieces that I've made and, you know, just practice pieces that I've worked on. She's taken all my Halloween coasters that I've made and a whole bunch of others. But 
she plays with them. She likes it, so I don't have a problem with it at all. I've got some I'll be doing again this year for Halloween. Some cute Halloween coasters. It's actually mixed in pretty well. Keep that off in there and not drip too badly. I'm awful at pouring. I'm usually making a mess, so. All right, Bubbles, you come on out. Yep, there's definitely a bit of gold tinge to this black. Slow down. Come on, just a bit more. And into the lid, and then I'm probably gonna have to find something else. I've got some little dragon keychains I can pour into. Let's stop you there for a second. Because I need to get a little silicone squidgy, the small one. Yeah, these bubbles here get y'all up and out the way off my edges. I'll spray you in a moment. That's what I wanted to do over here, is make sure I get these without sticking my finger in it, hopefully. Get the... resin into here. silicone. Finish pouring you up just a little. Don't make a mess. Bubbles. Is it all the way under that lip? Without causing it to come over onto my fingers. And how about that knob down there? Make sure there's nothing there. Just a smidgen more to the top. See if I can do a smidgen without going over. Okay, that looks good. Alrighty. Make a mess. Let's clean my hands right quick. Hopefully y'all can see this. Because I don't really want to move these too terribly much. At least the base on that one's done. Okay. Let's see what kind of dragons we can get going here. And I have to pour right-handed because I am not very good doing stuff left-handed. I 
Don't know how many I'll be able to get out of what little's left here, but we shall see. Just picking a small one here. Let's see, that one's not quite filming, so I'm getting a smidgen more into this one. Start another one. I gotta switch hands because I can't do that very well. Alright, scrape, scrape, scrape. Get it down. Not a lot left here. Just putting a little bit into this one. I can always come back and finish it later. Yep, and that's about it. I'll clean that out and figure out where that black drop that went. Hopefully it's on my craft thing. Because I don't... Yep, it's on there. Alrighty. I got a little dab on my craft smock thing. Whatever you call this. <laughs> I wear to keep resin off my clothes. Thankfully I had it on too. Because I'd have had a drip on me. But thankfully I didn't. Um... We'll be back to unmold the moon and these and probably tomorrow when they're done. Bye. Thanks for watching. Okay, it is time to unmold. It's still a little on the soft side on the edges, but it's definitely solid enough to come out. So we're going to see how this pretty thing turned out. That way I can go ahead and start getting it uploaded. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Move these from the edges. There we go. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm kind of talking a little low. I don't want to wake anybody else in the house up. Because it is 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> and as usual, I can't sleep, so. Still left a good bit of chameleon in there. But 
And yep, I've got some cleanup to do. Finish letting it harden and then I can use the deburring tool. It's definitely a lot lighter color because I didn't go with a black background. Can sort of see some of the little swirly spots, but of course, you know, glitter does what it glitter does is it sunk. Make sure I lay it flat to finish curing. Get it charged up right quick so we can get a good look at it. And I'll take my paint pens and do a little stuff around the eyes for some more detail. Let's get it charged up. Make sure she's full, full view. Get some black lights. Light remote. Get it good and charged up. So the glitter parts will come up as green, but the rest should be a nice yellow. And I'll have to hold that right there for a second while I get flash off and turn off my black lights. And that is pure glow from the Techno Glow Powder and the Let's Resin Glitter as well as the Salo ultra fine glitter but even the dragon glows a bit under it which I think is pretty cool I'll find a perfect spot to hang it and it's gonna go on the wall in bedroom or either my bedroom or my granddaughter's bedroom probably all right flash back on Get some light back on I'm going to just move this out the way for the moment so we can go ahead and unmold the I kept calling it a cauldron it's what it's going to be used for but it's as a decoration for my granddaughter to play with but it's a uh, jar mold and I saw Marvelous Artsy, actually. She paint brushed hers with black mica on the outside of the mold, and then she did glow-in-the-dark powder on the inside. And I have a similar one I did years, year and a half or so ago, that it was a lot smaller. Um, and I actually did it black with blue glow powder, and the top actually was a bubbling top, so it actually looked like bubbles coming out of the cauldron. And I did it in pure green glow in the dark and it turned out amazing. The cauldron doesn't glow quite as well um, because it does have a black base, a pretty heavy black base, but it's not an opaque black. So it still gives a bit of a, a hint of blue, but it doesn't glow for very long because of the fact that it the black just keeps absorbing the light so much so 
makes it a little difficult. This is the fun part I usually end up cutting my hands on. I'm trying to demold. Get around the base. Roll up. <laughs> Don't cut my knuckles. There we go. One side's rolled up. Let's see if I can get the other side to roll. Ah, there we go. That's a bit better. Make sure I didn't cut my knuckles. <laughs> Backside of my fingers. Always the fun part, trying to unmold, demold, whatever the proper terminology is for it. Couple little micro bubbles right there on the edges. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera. I'll make sure it's nice and sanded so the grandbaby doesn't hurt her fingers or anything on it. As well as the bottom. Definitely the burring tool and sand the bottom. I'll get the lid here in just a second and then we can take a look at the couple uh, two keychain, dragon keychains. Find somewhere to set that over to. Oh, that's definitely one of the better lids I've gotten. Oh, that is so cute! And it does have that just hint of gold. I don't know if it's picking up at all on the camera. There's just that hint of gold because I had used the uh, glow in the dark and the yellow mica powder that was already left over from doing the dragon. And you can definitely see the line on here. from where the two seamed at. The solid black line to the black with a bit of glow. I don't know if it's the camera's picking it up, but I can definitely pick up on it. Ah, there we go. Fits in there perfectly. The mat, I need a new mat bubbling up from the heat and this is supposed to be one that's supposed to be like a uh, heat resistant mat too but over time they still bubble up won't hold their shape these are still on the soft side you're good and flat.
That looks really good in the black, and I definitely like that hint of gold. I honestly can't tell if it's picking up on the camera, but it's got just a little bit of shimmer to them. I definitely like that. That's pretty. And I'm not going to unmold the half poured one. I'll have some leftover resin I'll pour into it later. And thinner pieces always take longer because it's only been about maybe 10 hours or less since I poured. So. And I can drill holes, turn these into keychains or put mag glue magnets onto the back. This one's just has a little less of the the gloss section so it makes it a little harder to see the hints of gold in there. I don't know if the camera's catching it at all. I'm trying on trying to move slowly so anybody who might have vertigo or you know problems with f fast movements it doesn't uh, affect them because I know I have vertigo so I try to be wary about that. It's hard for me to even do the the shorts to speed up the video because I can't watch it myself. The the fast movements. It's no fun. But let these sit out and harden. 